Well, hey there. Welcome to the Kim Constable Podcast. Nobody cares. Work harder. Welcome to today's training. I really hope that you enjoyed the training yesterday and I cannot wait for you to listen in today. So I'm not going to talk very long because there's a lot of talking inside the masterclass. I'm just going to jump straight into it and you won't hear from me again at the end. But please make sure that you enjoy this live training, especially for you. And please leave me a comment and let me know what you got out out of it. Okay, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Okay, you ready? Let's get going. So I call today commitment to reality. But first I want to ask the question, and I want, I'm going to look at the comments here. Um, how did you find yesterday? Tell me in the comments, how did you find it? I saw loads and loads of posts. And let me tell you something. I was awake from midnight until 3.30 a.m. scrolling my Facebook groups removing people who were nasty <laughs> and banning them from all the sculpted vegan groups and also just re- responding to people and looking at all the comments. But And I saw there was a lot of emotional stuff. There was a lot of people like, oh, oh my God, you know, this was so hard. And like, it was the most awful thing in the world. And honestly, there's a part of me, like my heart hurt for you guys who did that, who felt that way. And then there's the other part of me was like, like, do you want to be happy, dads? Because that's exactly how you wanted you to feel. <laughs> I'm not some kind of sadist, I swear to God, right? That's exactly how I wanted you to feel. I wanted those photos to hurt. You know why? Because if they don't hurt, you ain't gonna change. Let me look at the comments. Okay, you guys are saying it was hard to look at the before photos. It was a wake-up call for me. Reality check, but very enlightening. Um, let me see. I'm scared the crap out of me, but I've done it. Massive wake up for me. Okay. So I'm loving these. I'm loving these. So here's the thing guys, right? Let me tell you a secret about human beings. And this is something I learned long time ago from actually from my coach and my mentor. So I learned that human beings only change when change is easier than staying the same. I'm going to say that again. Human beings only change when change is easier than staying the same. So the reason why I wanted to give you yesterday and also today what I'm going to teach a massive amount of reality data is because I want it to be painful. I want you to feel pain when you look at your before photo. I want you to feel pain when you fill out this PDF today and you look at your measurements and your body fat, and you realize that you have been thinking all along or deluding yourself that you're about maybe, you know, 35% body fat. And then you realize that you look more like the girl in the top photo and you're actually 50% body fat. No judgment there, by the way. I mean, it doesn't define who you are as a human being. It just means you have a little more body fat, just like I have a lot of muscle, you have more fat. It doesn't make you a bad person, but I want you to look at these photos today and define your body fat and have a wee moment of, oh fuck, it's worse than I thought, right? The reason why I want this is because I want it to be painful where you are now. Why? Because human beings only change when change is easier than staying the same. And up until now, what I have found is people come into my programs and they they don't they pretend that it's not as bad as it is, or it's not even that it's bad because bad sounds like a judgment. They pretend that it's that, that they haven't been overeating or they haven't been under exercising or that their body isn't the way it is because they're able to cover it up. They're able to not look in the mirror. They get dressed and undressed in the dark in front of their spouse. So they're able to delude themselves that it isn't as bad as it is. And though every time they eat something which isn't on plan or every time they don't exercise when they say they will, or every time they don't go to the gym when they say they will, they're able to justify it in their mind. Now, not you guys, it's the other people. You know, the other people who aren't here today, no one here would ever do this, by the way. Not me, certainly. Not Christina over there, but but, uh, not you guys, the other people, okay? Other people. So what other people do, those other people, is they... Every time they do something which isn't on plan or which moves them further away from their goal, they pretend. They pretend it didn't really happen. And they go, okay, well, I've eaten that now. Or or they do this. How many times have you done this, right? You look at it like a muffin and you go, shouldn't eat this. Or a chocolate brownie, right? My my chef, we have a chef at home. Um, They say, ooh, Kim Constable has a chef. That one one goes down well online. I'm too fucking busy to cook, right? So we have a chef and he makes these amazing chocolate brownies. And sometimes when I'm dieting, I'm like... 
And I look at the brining, and then I go to guess. Like it didn't really happen because I can't see it anymore. It's gone, <laughs> right? It's gone. It's gone now. I mean, it was there a minute ago and now it's gone. And I go, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Right, next time, next time I'm going to be really good. Next time I'm not going to eat that brownie. I will have more self-control, goddammit. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. Self-control, out the window permanently, which is why we're all overweight, unfit, and not achieving our goals. So human beings only change when change becomes easier than staying the same. So I want you to look at your photos yesterday and I want you to go, holy crap, this is where I want to be and this is where I am. This is the world the way I want it to be. This is the world the way it is. And holy shit, they are far apart. Because in your mind up until now, you've kind of been like, you know, Oh, maybe one day, you know, I, you know what? In January, I'm going to commit to that fitness plan and I'm going to be shredded by March. <laughs> you know, you tell yourself this, don't you? When I decide, when I, when I decide, it will happen. That's what you tell yourself. I know it because I did it for very many years. And so what happened to me was whenever I started bodybuilding at the age of 37, I had been, <laughs> I had been telling myself for years and years and years, you know, one day I'm going to get fit. Just like I was telling myself, one day I'm going to be a multimillionaire. And I kept telling myself that one day I was going to do it. One day I was going to start it. And I, and I always said to myself, I'm a very, very persistent person. I'm a very strong person, a, very, a person who you know, can achieve their goals. And I always said to myself that when I, when I started, I was going to be the anomaly. Mm -hmm. I, whenever I started, I was going to have a body in like six months. I was going to have like a physique athlete body in six months. And I told myself when I decide, the day that I decide, I haven't decided yet, but the day that I decide, it's going to happen for me, right? Anyone else here do this? Tell me if you do this. Yeah, you're like, yep, I do that too. <laughs> I think I believe what you guys are all saying. Yep, telling myself one day, totally what I've told myself, you guys. Yeah, okay, so you're all with me, right? You keep telling yourself one day and then you tell yourself that one day when I decide, when I decide, it's going to be epic. Well, today, my friend, is that day. <laughs> In fact, yesterday was that day. Because here's what you have to ask yourself. You have to ask yourself, what's stopping you from getting what I call the reality data? Because today you are going to get reality data. You're going to measure yourself. You're going to measure your hips, your waist, your right thigh, your left thigh, your right arm, your left arm. You're going to weigh yourself on the sad step, not because you're going to judge yourself. The sad step is our word for the scale, or the scales, by the way, in Sculpted Vegan. So you're going to weigh yourself on the sad step. You're going to do your body fat. You're going to take all of your measurements, and then you're going to put them beside, if you want to, this is an extra little step for those of you who are ultra committed and have your overachiever hat on. You can put your before photo from yesterday, all four of them if you want side by side, and you can stick it with this data. And there is your reality starting point. Now, for those of you who are resistant to doing this step, I want you to ask yourself why. And I hypothesize that it could be for one of two reasons, okay? The first reason could be that you just don't want to see it. <laughs> you're just too scared. You're like, you're like a little child standing in the corner going, you can't see me. You know, whatever children put their hands over their eyes and they think that if they cover their eyes, you can't see them. You think that if you cover your eyes to the truth, it doesn't exist. Okay. And you'll be like, <laughs> I'm an adult. I'm a grown woman of 52 years of age. I don't act like a child. Yes, you do. <laughs> and the, the, the faster you can admit that, the faster you are going to change. So that's the first reason why people do it. The second reason is because, and this was my reason, by the way, okay? So my reason was, I don't want to see how bad it is because I know that when I see how bad it is, I will be forced to change. 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to change just yet. Because a lot of people have shown up here for the motive. A lot of people have shown up here for this challenge, and they're like, "Yes, I want to change my body. I want to sculpt a, a different body. I want to, you know, finally be fitter and leaner and stronger, or whatever all those words are for you, right? Those real juicy feeling words that I wanted you to bring up yesterday. Many of you have shown up here wanting that. But my question is, do you really want it, or are you just saying you want it? And whenever you really want it, you will be prepared to do anything it takes to get it. And it will be harder than you think. It will take longer than you think. And it will be tough. Okay? And you know that. That's the thing. Everybody watching this knows that it's not going to be easy. And it's going to be long. And it's going to be hard. And you're going to fail. You know that. Which is probably why you're putting off starting. And so many people don't want to get the data. They don't want to actually look at how bad it is because they know that the pain of seeing just how bad it is will be so great that they will be motivated to change. But rather than seeing that as a good thing, you're kind of like, I don't know if I'm ready. Maybe I don't want to. But here's the thing I want you to consider, right? You can, by deciding not to look at the data, you're actually deciding not to change already. You're making a decision not to change. You're not really, you know, you are pretending, but you're just fooling yourself. You're just fooling yourself that it's better than it is. You're not fooling anyone else. We can all see you, right? We can all see you, but you're kind of fooling yourself that it's not as bad as it is. But you can get the reality data and you can still decide not to change, but at least you'll decide not to change mindfully. Let me tell you a story, <laughs> very quick story. Anyone who knows me knows that I love my stories. So... My husband has decided, well, let me, let me just give you a bit of a backstory. So Ryan and I have gone through, Ryan and I have the most incredible marriage and we married for uh, 16 years. And up until three or four years ago, Ryan was the breadwinner. I was a stay at home mom to four young kids and Ryan was the breadwinner. He worked and he earned all the money. And I decided that I did not want Ryan to earn all the money anymore. I wanted to earn my own money so that I didn't have to be beholden to him. And I could get him to help me a little bit more around the house. And I could hire a housekeeper because I had four kids under the age of six. And my soul left my body a little bit every single day caring for these very emotional beings. And so I decided that I want to earn a lot of money. So I, I then, a few years ago, started The Sculpted Vegan, which took off, became the world's largest online vegan bodybuilding company. We have sold over 30,000 programs in three years. And now I'm the breadwinner. <laughs> now I earn all the money. Not all the money, but the majority of the money in our family. And so we had a little bit of a shift of power. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because it's, an, it's enabled Ryan, my husband, to take a bit of time off. So he still works. He, he's actually a director in a, in a large company. So he still works, but he's on furlough at the minute. And he's kind of at home with the kids, chilling out and doing whatever and blah, blah, blah. And Ryan decided recently that he was going to start taking ice baths. Now, I know the ice bath craze is sweeping the world at the minute. Now, everybody loves the ice bath, uh, except me. I, I would not get into an ice bath at the minute if you paid me because I see no benefit to the ice bath. Now, why am I telling you this story? Because Ryan has been trying to get me to take an ice bath for months. Because Ryan, when he gets in the ice bath, this is what I hypothesized, right? When he gets in the ice bath, he feels alive. And he feels, he's like, <sighs> and he's like really psyching himself up. And he's really, you know, and then he gets out and he, he feels really like he's accomplished something hard. And, you know, and it's really, really good. But let me tell you something. The hardest thing that Ryan accomplishes every day now is walking from his office upstairs to the kitchen for coffee and back again. <laughs> so that's like, that's like the height of the hard thing that he does in his day. Whereas for me, I'm training every day, doing cardio every morning. Well, he does cardio too and trains with me. So uh, cardio every morning, training every day. Then I come to the office. I run my multi-million dollar online worldwide company. Then I try to spend time with my husband and I try to spend time with my kids and I try to get enough sleep at night and I try to manage the, the 300,000 people that are in our networks. See, by the time I get home at night, I have absolutely no need for an ice bath. So whenever Ryan says to me, you should do an ice bath. I don't feel upset about it or scared about it or like I need to justify it. The data is I have enough adversity in my life and I don't need to create any more. I don't need to feel alive by getting in an ice bath. 
Because I feel alive every fucking day from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to sleep. In fact, I find it hard to manage my day as it is without making it any harder. So what has this got to do with the reality data of taking your measurements? Well, simply put, you can take your measurements and you can look at the cold, hard reality of those measurements and of those photos and you can still choose to do nothing. You can still choose to do nothing. That is your prerogative as a human being and as an adult who is perfectly in control of your entire life. And sometimes just having someone give you permission, give you permission to not change, you're like, oh, who knew? Because I think a lot of us have this belief that once we get the reality data, we have to change. We have to. And we put all these have to's on ourselves. Oh, the, the fear, the struggle, you know, we're like beating ourselves. I know I'm going to have to change. When I see this, I'm going to be so disgusted with myself. I'm going to have to change. No, you don't have to be disgusted. That's a choice. And you don't have to, you don't have to change. But you do have to get the data because at least when you have the data, you can then make a, a decision at cause. We call this free will, okay? Free will. Do you know what the definition of free will is? Free will is when, if I can give you a, a, an example of free will, have you ever been in a relationship where you know the relationship isn't good and you know it's probably going to end at some point, but you, you hang on in the relationship and you hang on in the relationship and, and this other person maybe does destructive stuff or unhealthy stuff or it's not good and the relationship isn't moving in the right direction and you, and you, but you keep hanging on and hanging on and you, you know that it's not good and you know that it needs to change and you're, you're oh, but you're unwilling to change and you're not sure and you go through this whole thing and then one day you look at your partner and you realize they are never going to change. This situation is never, ever going to be any different. This is reality. And in that moment, you change. You end the relationship, you move on. Or you choose to stay in the relationship and accept that it will always be bad. But in that moment, you have free will. You cannot have free will unless you have all the data. All the data. You can only act from a position of power, from a position of personal responsibility when you have all the data. And when you are existing in this fantasy land that things aren't really as bad as you think they are, then you will never be free to act. And here's the thing, you may take your measurements and you may look at your body fat and you may you know, get all the data and write it all down and realize, holy shit, things actually aren't as bad as I thought they were. But what I want you to caution as well, even as I'm saying that is to not place judgment on your photos. My trainer, Mark Getty, has actually just started training um, my director of operations in the company. And she was all like, oh, I don't want to send Mark my photos. You know, I just like, you know, I, I you know, everyone's so scared of the before photos because I think she imagines Mark, Mark's going to look at them and go, whoa. Fuck. Oh, fuck, I need to see that. No, Mark's like a gynecologist, okay? Like, really, do you think a gynecologist looks at your vagina and goes, ooh, it's a little, uh, this one's a little pinker? Than no, the gynecologist is going, okay, what's wrong here? What am I investigating? What am I looking at? It's just a vagina to a gynecologist, right? So to a trainer, they're just photos. To us, if you show me your photos, I'm not looking going, fuck, well, she is a wee bit overweight. Look at, woo, look at all that cellulite. No, I'm looking at that going, I'm looking at your photos going, okay, so here's what we have to work with. A little bit of excess cellulite. You know, okay, I can see she needs to lose a bit of back fat. Yeah, we can definitely work a wee bit in the arms. Like I'm assessing, here is my starting point, and so how are we gonna craft a program to get you where you wanna go? That's what reality data does. You have to separate all your judgment and all your feeling about it and all of your, your negativity over it and just see it for what it is. Reality data is where free will exists. Free will does not exist outside of reality data. You will never, ever, ever be able to achieve any long-term goal that you set for yourself if you cannot commit to the reality of your situation right now, whether that's with your body, whether that's in a relationship, whether that's in a business, whatever. If you're pretending that you're a six, but you're actually only a four, you will never get to a 10. If your goal is to get to a 10, a level skill 10, say, say you wanna to learn to play the piano, right? And you want to um, do your grade eight piano exam. And 
you have been playing the piano for a few years and you, you imagine in your head, you're like, yeah, I'm probably like a level five, a grade five, right? And would you, would you start to work towards your grade eight believing you're a grade five? Or would you have someone assess you to see where you really are? Well, I imagine if you really wanted to get to a grade eight, what you would do is you would have someone assess you to see where you really are. And they would say, okay, so you're actually at a level three. So in order to get to a level eight, you're going to have to go through four and five and six and seven and eight. So they would lay out the steps of what you needed to do. So you can't, as long as you continue to exist in this realm of fantasy, which is in your head, you're never going to achieve anything spectacular or anything worthwhile. Now, why am I hammering this home today? I'm hammering this home because, like I said, The Sculpted Vegan, for those of you who don't know me or know the company, has sold more than 30,000 programs in the last three years, right? We have welcomed more than a quarter of a million people into our organization through our programs, our mailing list, our my Instagram account. In fact, more than that, my Instagram account's at half a million. So probably around a, three quarters of a million or a million people, a million people I've had the opportunity to work with or touch or um, touch, like, hmm, okay, a bit saucy, or, you know, touch the lives of, you know, influence. And one of the things that I have noticed through selling 30,000 programs is that only 10% of people actually finish the programs. Now, this has been a consistent and persistent problem for many years. And, you know, whenever we were launching, so we have an 18-month Sculpt and Shred program. Okay, and I'm going to tell you a wee bit more about it on Friday, actually, because we're going to have some special offers for anybody who wants to upgrade or who wants to to um, to get involved with the 18 month program. But in the 18 month program, whenever we were launching it, whenever we were opening it last year, which was right in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you, coronavirus. Whenever we were launching it last year, my team, my creative director was saying to me, um, OK, my, you know, I need some before and afters of people who finished the program. And I was like, so few people have finished the program. He was like, are you serious? And I said, yeah, like you have no idea how few people have actually finished because it doesn't matter whether it's the eight week back camp, whether it's the, the one week shred, the 12 week shred, the four week shred, the jailhouse shred, it doesn't matter if the um, basement jacked program, people start and only 10% of people finish. We just ran an eight week back camp competition. We had 3000 people purchase this time around and only 300 submitted photos. It's consistently 10%. Why are only 10% finishing? This question has bugged me for three years because I am a very resourceful person and I can figure shit out. And I like to know the answers. And I'm like, why are only 10% of people finishing? Why? Is it something I'm doing? Is it something that's missing from the program? Is it that they need extra support or extra coaching? Or have I like not explained things well enough? Like, what is it? And I realized through doing a lot of questioning in one of my other groups, my Sculpted Vegan Insiders group, I asked a question of the 11,000 members. We had thousands of responses. And the biggest response that came up was, I just can't motivate myself to get going. I can't, I, I start and I stop and I start and I stop and I start and I stop, stopped. So I, I dug a little deeper and I was like, why are people starting and stopping. Why are they not starting and continuing? And I realized that the reason people are starting and not continuing is because they don't really know what their starting point is. And not, do they, not only do they not really know what their starting point is, they don't know where they're going. They don't have a clear vision of where they're going. That's why I told you the story yesterday of me flying first class to Australia. I could taste it feel it. I could imagine myself sitting in the chair. I could taste the champagne I would be drinking when I did it. 15 years we traveled to Australia with my, to go and see my husband's family in economy until I finally made the money to travel first class. And, oh my God, it was so sweet. But I knew that one day I would do it. It took me 15 years to do it, but I never gave up hope. And so the reason why people aren't following through. The reason why they're following, falling off the wagon, well, there's two reasons, actually. The first one is they don't really know what their starting point is. They don't know. They're not absolutely 100% clear about where they are. So they delude themselves. So they start and then they, they work out for a week and they don't really meal plan and they, they don't really, they, they do most of the workouts and some of the cardio and it feels quite hard. And then they take their progress picture in a week or two and they go, they go, oh, I'm so depressed. I just, I've been working out 
like two weeks and I haven't seen any progress and the scale hasn't moved and I just can't see any changes in my body. And we're like, but what did you expect would happen in two weeks? And they're like, well, I expected something. And we're like, well, no, because you're 47% body fat and you haven't really been eating in enough of a calorie deficit and you're just starting out in training. So you're not really pushing as heavy as you would if you were a seasoned athlete. So your expectation is completely out of line with reality. But quite often, the reason why their expectation is out of line with reality is because they're not truly clear about where their starting point is. Because if you are relatively new to training or you haven't trained in a long time and you're over 30 to 35% body fat, and maybe you're battling menopause, and maybe you have, you know, your, you've got some injuries, or you've had an illness, or your body is battling something, and you're not really sure about how heavy you should lift in the gym, so that's on you, and you're not really sure about macros and calories, so you have to learn all that too, you're never going to make massive, measurable progress in two weeks. You're just not. You're just completely out of line with reality. And so what I realized was the reason why people aren't achieving their goals in my program, only 10% of people are finishing, is because 90% of people are out of reality. So the reason why I decided to run this challenge, I knew I was going to run a challenge. I didn't know what I was going to run, but I asked 11,000 people and we had thousands of answers. And the biggest thing that people said was two things. I need to, I, I keep falling off the wagon. I need to motivate myself. I need more accountability. And what was underneath that was you, they weren't really sure of what their starting point was and they weren't sure where they're going. So they weren't clearly committed to the process. Free will happens when you have all the data. You cannot ignore the data. It's like someone has dumped a bucket of cold water on your head. The cold water of reality washes over you. You are soaking wet and you cannot ignore the fact that you are soaking wet. That is free will. That is where motivation comes from. And that is what I'm teaching you today. Okay. The second reason is they don't have someone to lean on when, when times get tough. Times get tough. I have been crying to my trainer mark before i have burst into tears at the bottom of a, at the bottom of a squat set i have cried in the gym more times than i can remember i have literally stood with my arms around my trainer sobbing i've been messaging him going i'm a shit mother and i have constant bmt and i'm like so horrible to everyone around me and i'm so tired but i don't know what to do we all struggle and when you struggle you need someone there to support you and it's really hard when you don't have someone there to support you. It's really, really, really hard. So that's why when you're getting all of this reality data in this group at the minute, I wanted to be there for you, to support you, and to give you my full team of coaches to support you. Because, and that's why I'm, I'm not allowing any shit talk in the group. That's why I'm not allowing anyone writing these punishing, judgmental posts of, oh, you guys are so stupid. Nobody knows. You're all like asking all these stupid questions. There are no stupid questions. If you're struggling, we got your back. We're here to support you, okay? Everyone is a beginner at some point. Everyone is a beginner. And I love telling the story of my community manager, Stace, who you all get to know really well, who drove me fucking nuts when she first joined the 18 Month Sculpting Shred because she asked so many questions. And I was like, oh my God, I'm actually going to kill this girl if she asks any more questions. Like, I was like, surely, surely she can't have any more questions. But Stace was just so determined to figure out the information that, that she actually excelled in the program and she became my community director. So questions are good. We love the questions and we are here to support you all along the way. Um, okay, let me see. What else do I want to talk about today? Oh God, I seem, I, seem, I seem to have gone through a lot of the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I've written here, fear of failure is the killer of all dreams, but it's the only thing that will move you forward. So many of us are so scared of failing that we, that we don't start. We're so scared of going into the gym. We're so scared of looking like a dick, right? You're like, you walk into the gym and you're like, oh, I'll just get on this cross trainer here while I check out where are the machines? Where's the free weights? And you're on the cross trainer. Maybe no one will notice me. And then you're like, oh, you walk across and you're like, hmm, 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 what am I supposed to do with this thing? Do I curl them? Okay, I'll curl them for a while. <laughs> you know, it's like everyone is a beginner, but we're so scared of failing that we don't start. But if you don't start, you're failing anyway. So I'm gonna say that again. Many of us don't start because we're, we're scared of failing, but if you don't start, you're failing anyway. So the thing that you're scared of happening is already happening. You're already failing. So you may as well just go and start because you're already failing by not starting. Um, one other thing I wanna talk about before I take some questions is failure is the only way 
you learn. And I know you're like, oh yeah, we're told this, but I, I don't want you to be in your head with this, okay? I want you to really stick with me here for five minutes while I tell you something about this. I'm gonna give you a real life example. So three years ago, I started my company and I started, uh, which is now, like I, I said, the world's largest online vegan bodybuilding company. We have gone from a turnover of zero to a turnover of $8 million, okay? That's fast. And do you know what happens when you grow really fast or when you move really fast or when you commit to something and you commit with your entire soul, you fail. And the, and the more you commit, the more you will fail. And that is wonderful because the more you fail, the more you learn. So I went into business recently with, um, I, I formed a partnership with a, an online vegan chef and we, we set up this incredible um, online vegan cooking course and it was amazing. And we did it so fast. We went from idea to launch in three weeks and we failed spectacularly in the launch, right? We failed in the Facebook ads. We failed to assess the audience. We failed on the emails. We failed on so many parts that we forgot to check. We failed so hard. It wasn't even funny. But you know what we did from the, from the failure? We learned. We, I learned more in that launch than I have learned in three years of business. Why? Because I took a massive risk. With massive risk comes massive failure. With massive failure comes massive learning. With massive learning comes faster progress. The reason why I've been able to grow so fast is because of the failure, okay? Is because of the failure. The more you fail, the more you learn. So by getting this reality data, by looking at all your failures, by admitting all your failures, you can start to look for the missing resource. And I talk, to, I talk with my team about this all the time because I want you to understand, I'm not giving you, um, I'm not giving you hypotheses here, right? I'm not like, oh, I wonder what this, would this be true if I said this? I'm giving you fact. I have achieved an incredible amount in the last four years through massive failure. So I'm giving you fact here. And so what I say to my team every day is, I say to them, we are going to fail. We fail all the time. Okay. Even in launching this five, this five day body makeover group, we made, we made so many mistakes. We're making mistakes every day. Even this morning at like 3 30 AM, I'm messaging my coaches and they're like, what the fuck are you doing awake? I'm like, okay, I've noticed this is a thing. And I haven't, I haven't given you this data. And I've realized I've made a, you know, there's been a missing resource here and I've made this mistake here. There's no blame or punishment in our company. If somebody fails, it's not like, Oh, you're, you're bad. Oh, you're well, who's to blame? Who's to blame for that? No, it doesn't happen that way. We go, okay, where's the missing resource? Okay, so I want you to really, as you move forward through these five days, I want you to carry this through, through the rest of these five days and the rest of your life, okay? The re failure means you have a missing resource. Whenever we fail in the company, we say, what's the missing resource? What's the missing resource? How did the failure happen? Because failure happens when there's a missing resource. So to give you an example, um, at Christmas time, really, si really simple example. At Christmas time, we had organized for different members of staff to take over customer service over the Christmas period. And but then, but Rachel, who's head of our customer service, whenever she logged in one day, she saw that there were like three hundred tickets, and she was like, "Oh shit!" She was like, "I've misunderstood. I thought that I, I, I was supposed to be doing all the tickets all over the weekend, and I and I've completely like I've completely messed up here, and so I'm just going to clear them all." So she cleared all the backlogs of tickets. So nobody knew there was a problem because Rachel's so efficient that she just she she solved the problem. So then a couple of weeks later, or a couple of days later, I can't remember what it was it came to light through something else that there had been loads and loads and loads of tickets. And I was like, well, were these, you know, but surely these people were organized to look after customer service. And Rachel was like, oh, well, I thought it was my mistake. And I said, well, no, I don't think it was. I said, well, let's look into it a bit more. I said, why didn't you tell me? And she said, oh, because I thought that I'd made a mistake. And I said, even if you hadn't made a mistake, that's good. That's great. Because then we can figure out where's the missing resource. So whenever we dug a bit deeper, we realized it was just a communication issue. It wasn't Rachel's fault at all. It was a communication issue, which I had failed to communicate effectively with member staff who'd failed to communicate. It was just a failure in communication. Now, had I not found out about that, we wouldn't have known about the failure in communication. We wouldn't have known that this higher level failure had happened and we wouldn't have known to fix it. But the minute we find out about it, we fixed it. And now that higher level communication failure probably will never happen again. But there was no blame. There was no, why did you not show up? Why did you not listen? Why did you not tell her? No, none of that. No blame. Failure is just data. Your journey to the perfect body, to your perfect body goal is just data. There's no opinion, there's no judgment, there's no right or wrong, there's no good or bad, there's just data. Oh wow, I failed, I ate that brownie when I wasn't supposed to. 
what was my missing resource? Was it, emotional, was it an emotional resource? Well, yeah, I was feeling pretty stressed and I had a really, really, really hard day. And so I realized that when I feel really stressed and I have a hard day, I, I turn to sugar. So how can I, how can I work this problem? How can I work this prob problem out in the future? How can I combat this problem? Well, I can have a session with a coach. We have emotional coaches in the Sculpted Vegan who can help to integrate that behavior for you so it doesn't happen again. Or I can start to journal and I can write down where are the stressful situations that trigger this emotional eating. Or I can just, I can develop a breathing technique where when I feel myself wanting to eat that chocolate brownie, I can breathe a little deeper and I can interrupt the stimulus response pattern so that I don't reach for the brownie. Or I can just eat the fucking brownie because it makes me feel better. And feeling better in this moment is far more important to me than achieving my goal until it's not. So, but it's not like, oh, it's so bad. I can't believe it. I didn't go to the gym today. I hate myself. I beat my, no, that's not even useful. Okay. What, like, what is guilt? Guilt is completely and utterly irrelevant and, and not even useful. A beaten you is not better than a non-beaten you. It's not. Beating yourself up achieves no purpose. It doesn't stop you from making the mistake again. Beating yourself up and punishing yourself serves no purpose whatsoever. Looking at the data, figuring out where the failure was and what the missing resource is, does. That serves a purpose and that moves you closer towards your goal. So I want you to start taking all of the emotion, like I saw it yesterday in the group, all of you guys going, oh my God, like I'm, these photos, I'm so, I don't know how I've let myself go. No, and you need to stop that now. You need to make a commitment to yourself to stop that. You are now a data-driven human being. I am a professional bodybuilder. I have zero emotion attached to my physique. I stand on the scales. I, I stood on the scale this morning. It was 68 kilo. I don't mean that. I don't make that 68 kilo mean anything. And I think that's what 68 kilos in pounds. I'll work that out for you now. 68 kilos multiplied by 2.2. I am 150 pounds, right? I did not go, oh, 150 pounds. Or, ah, oh, yay, 150 pounds. I'm like, oh, wow, 150 pounds. Interesting right? Because to me, it's just a measurement. It's just a number of measurement. I can look in the mirror and go, right, I'm 17% body fat. I want to be 15% body fat. What, what steps am I going to take to get there? Everything becomes data. I'm 171 centimeters tall. I have a waist of, you know, I would love to have a 34, 24, 34. Well, actually, no, I wouldn't. But you know what I'm saying? I'm like 34, like, I think I'm like 28 waist or something. Um, I'm probably 36 hips. So, but that doesn't mean anything. That's just data. That's just my starting point. That's just where I'm at. So you have to stop judging yourself, punishing yourself, beating yourself up. It's not useful. It's not useful. And if you continue to do that, you're doing it for a reason. You're doing it either because you think that it's getting you somewhere. It's not. Unless you are like walking around completely ripped and jacked and shredded and you're beating yourself up, then probably it is useful to get you where you want to go. But if you're not where you want to be, you're not anywhere close to where you want to be and you're beating yourself up, it's maybe time to consider that it's not working. It's not helping. And that there's maybe another way that you can try. And maybe that might be my way. Because I don't want to be big-headed, right? But I've probably achieved what it is that you want to achieve. Not only for me, but for the thousands and thousands and thousands of other women who have joined my program. Now, before I take a couple of questions, there's one thing that I want to talk about, which is the reason why many people not you guys, by the way, the other people who aren't here today. So there's many reasons why those other people, there's two reasons usually why those other people find it really hard, find another reason why they find it hard to achieve their goals, okay? And these reasons are called defiance and know-it-all. I was lying in bed last night and I was like, and I, I, I'd had a couple of interactions with some people in the group where they were immediately defiant to anything I suggested. So I was like, find a body goal. And they're like, oh no, 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 I don't want to have someone else's body as my body goal. And I'm like, what? Well, just play, just play with me. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Why, just, just, why don't you just try and do it my way? Because your way obviously hasn't worked. <laughs> don't mean to like, you know, don't want to sugarcoat it for you, but like, seriously, if your way had worked, then I'd be happy to sit and compare ways, but let's just hypothesize that up until now, your way hasn't worked. But mine has, for me and thousands of other people. I, I find it hard to understand why someone would not do it the way that I was laying it out. Like, what's 
the worst thing that can happen? Really, what's the worst thing that could happen? Now, unless you're like, well, if I was to see someone else's body go and it wasn't real, that could trigger like a massive eating disorder with me and then I probably wouldn't eat for like a year and then I would die. Well, okay, well, maybe then I'd say, well, it's probably better not to have a body goal. But if that's not going to happen and you're, you know, and, and you're just a little bit defiant, I would ask yourself why you're a little bit defiant. Second reason that most people don't achieve their goals is, and I know this one very well, okay? So there's no judgment here. Many people are simply know-it-alls. They're know-it-alls. I go, so um, you should do this. And so take your before photos and then get an after photo and look up a body goal and put them side by side. And people go, um, oh, no, 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 no. No, that's that's not the way to do it. That's not, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm, I'm going to do it my way. I go, okay, great. Well, what is your way? Well, my way is um, that I'm going to, um, I'm just going to visualize what it is that I want. And I'm not going to write it down because I think that if I write it down, that will that will demotivate me to you know move towards my goals. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so don't be defiant and don't be a know-it-all. When I started bodybuilding, I went to my trainer and I said, how many bikini athletes have you trained? Many. What have your results been? Very good. <laughs> Show me your pictures. He showed me the pictures. What have you achieved with your own body? Yeah, you're in pretty good shape. You're ripped, okay? Yep, competed on stage. Okay, give me the plan and I will follow it. And he said, here's your plan. Don't deviate, follow the plan. You know what I did? Followed the plan. I didn't say, well, I think I know better actually, uh, or maybe I should do this, or or maybe, that. well, actually I did in the beginning. He would say to me, so I want you to eat 125 grams of white rice and such and such tofu, and I would go, well, white, white rice, white rice? It's brown rice, not better? I, I think I should eat brown rice. Brown rice is much better for your health. And he's like, well, no, you need to eat white rice because it's a molecular, high molecular weight carbohydrate, goes into the muscles better after training. No, no, but, but brown rice is better for nutrition. And he's like, do you want me to fucking train you or do you want to do it yourself? Because seriously, if you knew more than me or better than me, you'd be walking around shredded, but you're not. So why not just trust me? So whenever I finally gave up control, because I understand, listen, I was a know-it-all, right? I was defiant and I was a know-it-all. And my first year of training, I did defy my trainer a lot because I felt that I knew better. I, I was a nutritionist, right? And a yoga teacher. And I was highly experienced in veganism and, and the human body. And I was like, I just I don't think he knows as well as I know. I knew all about nutrition. I studied nutrition for 20 years. And I mean, who's he? Like, he doesn't know anything about nutrition. Yeah. Did I stand on stage shredded? No. Did I achieve my ultimate body goal? No. Do you know when I achieved my ultimate body goal? When I shut the fuck up and started to listen and didn't defy him and didn't and wasn't a know-it-all and I followed the fucking plan, right? When I followed the plan, do you know what happened? Ripped and shredded to the bone. Was it hard? Yes. Did I cry? A lot. Did I want to give up? Many, many, many times. Did I get the result? Yes. Okay. So if you have a tendency to be a wee bit of a know-it-all, not you guys, by the way, the other people who are not here, no one here would be an all. And if you're, if you have the tendency to be a wee bit defiant, again, not you guys, the, the other people who are watching the replay, um, I would ask yourself, how is this holding you back? Consider that your defiance and your know-it-all behavior may be holding you back. Consider, and I know this may be really shocking to many of you, so just listen for a second. Uh, consider that maybe just maybe in this instance, you don't know best. I, and I know that's really horrifying. And I would just, and I'm sorry for saying it out loud. And I know that I probably offended many of you, but I really want you to consider that maybe just maybe in, in this particular area, right? Of sculpting a muscular, incredible body at the age of 42, which I am, just so you know, with four children who I homeschool, building a multi-million dollar company at the same time. Just consider that maybe, and I'm not saying that I do, and I know that I may be really far reaching here, but just consider that maybe I might know better than you in this instance. And if you want to achieve a goal, you could maybe try it my way. You don't have to, but what? But imagine that you did. Imagine that you actually did it my way. You might get the result that you're dying for. You might not, and you may be right, okay? And I'd be wrong, but like, let's 
what's the worst thing that can happen? Like, just give it a shot, you know, just like, give it a shot. Like, what's the worst thing that happen? The worst thing that at, at worst, you'll achieve an incredible body or at best, sorry, you'll achieve an incredible body. And at worst, you'll prove me wrong. And you were right all along. And then you'll get to be right. And that feels really good. So, and you won't have the body, but at least you'll be right. Okay. Which is more important to some people than actually achieving a goal. I figured that out. Okay. Over my many years of coaching many students, I realized some people want to be right more than they actually want to achieve their goal. Isn't that really shocking? So if this is you, not you, by the way, but the other people, just throwing you to try on that maybe that might be going on and resist the urge to be that way. Just, you know, zip it and take a big deep breath and say, fuck, maybe she knows what she's talking about. And what's the worst thing that can happen if I just give it a shot and do it her way? What do you reckon? Think you could? <laughs> okay. This was so much fun. I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this today. Okay. So here we go. Time to get real commitment to reality. It is. Can someone please confirm with me that it is in announcements? If I don't have to, I'm going to confirm myself. <laughs> by someone, Christina's like, that someone would be me. Christina's over there, by the way, guys. Um, so uh, let me just check. Is it an announcement? Yeah. It is. Christina has confirmed. Day two homework. Click below to download. You can't see that. It is now in announcements. Go there. Download your homework. The PDF is fillable, right? It is fillable. Fillable? Is that even a word? Editable? Edible. Editable. No, edible. <laughs> Not edible. Editable. You click on it, you put in your weight, your circumference, hip circumference, waist circumference, right arm, left arm. Um, and then you're going to estimate your body fat. Okay, one word before we finish. Please, for the love of God and all things holy, don't get hung up on the body fat, okay? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just guess. Just be like, Okay, I think I'm around 30%. I'm not 35, but I'm not 30. So I must be 32 or 33, okay? Just guess. It really doesn't matter. Consistency trumps perfection every single time. In every aspect of life, consistency trumps perfection every single time. Don't get hung up on the minutia. Don't get fixated on the getting this point part right. It isn't going to make a difference in the long run. You can't micromanage the tiny details of your journey thinking it's going to give you some kind of incredible advantage. It's not. There are no marginal gains to be had in this game. The only way you can sculpt your body and change it in the long term is committing to the process for at least 12 to 24 months. I'm not even kidding. You will not lose 50 pounds by October. You will not sculpt the body of a physique athlete in six months. You will not. And if you think that you will, you are deluded, okay? And you will be disappointed. If you have changes to make, if you want to get rid of belly fat, back fat, arm fat, if you want to change your body, you want to sculpt, you know, good shoulders and good arms, I'm like, huh, I never had a bicep, by the way. That took me years. See that? Like, see that, bad boy? Years to get a bicep. I always had this real flap. And even now, it isn't, like, huge. It's just, like, I definitely don't have, like, a, a huge bicep. Um, no, I'm just, like, perving on my own bicep. <laughs> so it will take you far longer than you think, okay? And you need to commit to the process. And this is the first part. Get the reality data. Commit to reality, okay? And don't have any judgment over it. Just leave the judgment at the door. This is a non-judgmental group. We are systematically booting out all of the judgmental people. So if you have the urge to be judgmental, I would just not do that because you might get booted out of the group. I'm only joking. Don't, you know, always come in with good intent. It's okay to give feedback, but always be well-intended in your feedback. And don't be mean, okay? We don't allow meanness in this group. We don't allow judgment. Not No nasty judgment, no meanness. So in, and the first step to not being mean to other people is to stop being mean to yourself. Stop being mean to yourself. You are a beautiful human being with, with good intent. Even if you are 400 pounds overweight, do you know what your intent was? Do you know how you got 400 pounds overweight? You wanted to feel good. Three things stimulate the pleasure centers of the brain, eating, learning, and sex, okay? Eating stimulates the pleasure centers of the brain. 
You wanted to feel good. That's why you're 400 pounds overweight. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not because you deserve the worst in life. It's not because you have no self-control or low self-esteem or any of, it's not because you're, you know, you just, you just can't do what you say you're going to do. You wanted to feel good. Your intent was good. Your intent was to feel good. That's why you're 400 pounds overweight. Now we need to reprogram you so that exercise and working towards a goal feels better than eating. Okay. That's what you just need to reprogram yourself. And that doesn't happen overnight. It happens over a long period of time. But if you are committed to the process, I will commit to you. I will commit to you. The longest program that we have in this company is 18 months long. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that, that says? That says I'm committed to you. My company is committed to you. My team, my coaches are committed to you for at least 18 months. People forget that. They go, oh, I, I'm not buying an 18 month program because like, it's such a long time and I want faster results and it's so expensive. And I'm like, you don't even understand what I'm saying to you by offering an 18 month program. I'm offering 18 months of commitment. And so, and that, you know, and, and whenever people think about that, they go, oh, actually, yes, yeah, never thought about that. Actually, it's, it's quite interesting. So whatever your goal is, whatever you want for yourself, if you want support, we're here to support you. I'm not going anywhere. We're launching an app in June, June 19th. We have our brand new app ready to launch. It's being custom built at the minute. Um, it's going to be absolutely amazing. We're going to have a full community on there. Every single program that we have like 20 programs. Um, at least I'm not sure how many there is, but there's a lot. We're going to have every program on the app. All your past purchases will be in the app um, if you've purchased programs in the past. And we're not going anywhere. So this is just the start of your journey these five days. We have many, many, many options to help you free and free and paid. Okay. We want everyone to be helped. So if you're committed to yourself, we are committed to you. Do the homework. Don't let yourself down. This is a personal accountability challenge. Do the homework. Take a screenshot. Don't overthink it. Upload it to the website and then give yourself a little pat on the back for achieving the second step towards your most awesome, epic body. Uh, because that means you've taken two steps in the right direction and you are well on your way. Okay, guys, I am going to go now. <sighs> Sending you big hugs and big kisses. Don't forget, there's a special live tonight with Coach Lee, one of my most experienced and fabulous coaches is going to be here tonight just doing a live Q&A for you guys. So I just wanted to give you like as much help as possible. So anything that's coming up where you have questions about holding yourself accountable or you're scared or you're fearful or anything I've taught over the last two days, Coach Lee is going to be here tonight to answer your questions and just have a lot of fun with you. Um, there's a, a post in the group. I think she's going live at 11 p.m. UK time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern time. So 7 p.m. Eastern time, Coach Lee's going to be live in the group. Don't miss it. You've got Stace tomorrow, Laura the day after. Is that right, Christina? Yeah. So Stace tomorrow and Laura the day after. Two of our, or three of our most experienced coaches are going to be live here to help you. And I will be here tomorrow at 2 p.m. UK time. Mwah. Love you loads. Thank you so much for being here live today. Congratulate yourself for showing up because that was the first step. And I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Oh.